A technique for obtaining approximate solutions to boundary values. Most of the problems uh, in finite element are boundary value problems. Okay, so for those, uh, the eigenvalue problems or boundary value problems will be solved in the case of uh, finite elements. So partition of a given domain is supplied. We discretize a given element into sub domain, just uh, making a very simple and solvable domain. The domains are called elements. So approximate the solution using piso as polynomial within the element. So we approximate the domain. So uh, this is uh, the discretized or the uh, partitioned domain. So from this figure, as we see, uh, the given physical object is discretized to uh, subdomains. This the structure discretized subdomain and uh, having, for example, one element here, that is an element. And the whole domain is having some fixed boundary conditions, traction boundaries. There may be some displacement boundaries also. So uh, different boundaries are there on the given domain of an element. So uh, this is the physical uh, 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 discretization of given domain and taking uh, an element. And then uh, the, uh, uh, what we call that, um, mm, equilibrium equations also applied. So this is the equilibrium equation for the given domain of structure, having uh, sigma xx, sigma uh, xy, uh, again bx, that body force, considering body force. Okay, so this is, uh, and also, uh, a piecewise approximations will be uh, used. Here we can see the white line, with the, which is exact solution. When we apply exact solution, uh, calculation of exact solution gives us the uh, white line. And the red one line here shows the approximate solutions. That means uh, for a given element uh, and nodes, uh, we approximate the uh, solution method. So, from that, the solution obtained from the approximation and the solution obtained by the exact calculations or uh, analytical calculation. So basically, what is the advantage of finite element? We already tried to see last week, but let me repeat it uh, for more. So, uh, sorry. So, advantage of finite element. Uh, the first one is uh, model and shape bodies. Mm, that is uh, modeling regular or irregular uh, shaped bodies, most of uh, like intricate shapes. Uh, to compute general load conditions, uh, finite element helps us to co compute general load condition. Uh, model bodies comprise uh, composed of different materials like composite. In the case of composite, uh, we have material of fiber, we have material of uh, matrix, we have material of interface. So uh, such bodies can easily be uh, modeled with the help of uh, finite element modeling techniques. Uh, to solve uh, unlimited number and kind of boundary conditions, uh, able to use different element size and piece, a place where loads or stress are concentrated. Handles non linear behavior uh, using linear approximations. So it helps us to uh, uh, solve non linear uh, equations and non linear behavior of material. And it enables us to compute programming and software package. So as I uh, try to explain, uh, finite element model use uh, many software packages. Some of them are uh, helpful to solve the equations. 
some of them are uh, used to model them to physical uh, bodies like uh, and others are uh, to uh, make further uh, post processing analysis so many software packages are uh, useful currently uh, to solve finite element uh, problems and it reduces the system cost <coughs> Uh, what is the disadvantage of, we can say it as limitation uh, rather than uh, disadvantage, we can say it as limitation. So the limitation of FPM are computationally time consuming because it takes uh, uh, computational time. It needs higher efficient, higher uh, memory computers or uh, efficient computers and large, large computer memories and needs proper engineering judgments. That means when we are discretizing the domain, uh, the size of mesh or that discrete element determines the solution or the accuracy of solution so that it needs our judgments. So, uh, and the inners may creep up in their uh, preparation and the result that we obtain uh, also appear to far from the acceptable. That means um, because of some assumptions, because we use a number of assumptions in FPM. So these assumptions are uh, 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 encountered with some uh, errors that maybe because of discretization error, because of numerical uh, error, but different source of errors are there. So uh, uh, the solution cannot be exactly the same as the exact solution, as we have seen in the last figure. Errors are related to approximation and the round of also may appear, and in fluid dynamic problems, some other methods of analysis may, Prove efficiency than FPM, like that people are mostly used in the case of fluid dynamics, finite volumated rather than finite element method. A general procedure uh, for finite element analysis, mm, actually uh, in uh, computer numerical simulations, we have three important steps that pre-processing step, uh, solution step, and post-processing step. So what pre-processing means that define the geometry uh, uh, domain of the problem, uh, define element type to be used, define the material of the element, ge geometric property of element, element connectivity, physical constraints, and the loading condition. So that phase is called pre-processing phase. And the second phase is solution phase. In the solution phase, we compute the unknown values of the primary field variables. And we compute values uh, then used by bug substitution to compute additional uh, derived variables such as reaction force, element stress, and heat flow. And finally, post-processing is the third phase of finite element uh, simulation that post-processing softwares uh, are required in this case. Uh, these softwares can be uh, directly the main software or auxiliary softwares. Uh, so the main software package sometimes uh, cannot fully extract the solution. So that post-processing is a solution extracting phase. So we need some extra uh, softwares. Uh, uh, for example, in the case of uh, uh, Abacus, we might use the take float software for uh, uh, some other purpose, or other uh, like Digmat, so that are uh, post-processing softwares. So how we can model that we uh, uh, the three important modeling uh, 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 defining the physical problem and then uh, this physical problem is converted to mathematical model with the help of some governing differential equations 
and then numerical modeling will be uh, uh, come after. So, uh, so this is, for example, one of the uh, problem uh, related is uh, having materials, two different material, the heat convection, uh, convection heat loss, or uh, for example, bottom material, um, other materials, the temperature distribution. So how we can uh, uh, discretize this? Like this. So this is a discretization method. And then we can take uh, an element from the discrete element, which based on a critical element, we selected here some critical regions of the element, and uh, then uh, uh, learn uh, order polynomial solutions uh, will be uh, considered. And the problems like uh, these uh, differential equations with boundary uh, values are considered. So this is the second order uh, differential equation uh, with boundary of 0 to 1. And uh, the, uh, the, the range of uh, uh, analysis is from 0 to 1 and the boundaries of u of 0, u at x0 is equal to 0, and u at x is equal to 1 is equal to 0. So this is the boundary conditions. Okay, these are uh, what we have discussed in detail. So, so modeling physical problems, that physical problem is a mathematical model, a numerical model. Then does the answer make sense? If yes, then we are happy with that. If no, then we have to define the analysis again and make iterations. Or uh, we can go for the design improvement back and we start from the very beginning and recycle the job. This is called the iterative process of finite element. Or it can be design iteration or finite element iteration. So the main steps involved in finite element analysis are Discretization of the continuum. Uh, we'll see this uh, one by one in a brief manner so that uh, I simply call them. So discretization of the domain, selection of the shape function, evaluation of the element properties and its stiffness, formulation of overall stiffness matrix, for formation of load vectors, uh, incorporation of boundary conditions, Solution of the uh, simulations, uh, simultaneous equations, yeah, solutions, um, and finally, competition of unknown parameters or unknown variables. So this is the flow chart of uh, finite element. So let's see them one by one. So <coughs> what discretization of the continuum domain mean? That is, so the continuum a uh, physical object is divided into number of elements by imaginary lines or surface. So the interconnected elements may be different uh, size and shapes. So that is called discretization. This is called, the uh, in the case of most simulation software, this is the mesh, mesh portion. We mesh the given domain using different mesh types. And then identification of variables. Means the elements are assumed to be connected at their intersecting point, uh, referred to as nodal points. At each node, unknown displacements are to be prescribed. So uh, we'll consider those nodes as the point where our analysis or for the displacement or stress or other parameters will be calculated. The third one is choice of approximate function. So this is uh, judging the solution for the given finite element. So displacement function is the starting point of the mathematical analysis. This represents the variation of displacement with the element. And the displacement function may be approximated in the form 
of linear function or higher order function. So we have uh, discussed um, the Pascal triangle in the last lecture. So we can select the uh, proper function or uh, uh, we assume solution for the given uh, problem that is based on uh, uh, some displacement functions. And the convenient way to express it by the polynomial expressions, that shape or geometry of the element may also be approximated. The fourth step is formation of element stiffness matrix. Now, once we select a proper domain and the proper uh, solutions, uh, displacement solutions or uh, approximations made, then we go for the formulation of uh, an element stiffness. Because we, the element is the building block of the whole domain, so we consider an element, and then we uh, properly assign uh, proper stiffness matrix for an element. So after a continuum is discretized with desired element shapes, the individual element stiffness matrix is formulated. Basically, it is a minimization procedure with uh, whatever may be the approach adopted. So, for certain elements, uh, the form involves a great deal of uh, sophistication. So, uh, so, the geometry of elements is defined in reference to the global frame coordinate transformation. So, must be done for elements where it is necessary. Uh, the fifth step is formulation of uh, formation of overall stiffness. Means that uh, an element stiffness matrix which create in the previous step will be come to superimpose to form a, a global size of uh, the whole domain. Then they will be sum up and make an assembly. So the assembly to form overall stiffness matrix. The sixth one is formation of the element loading matrix. The loading forms an essential parameter in any structural engineering problem. So the load inside an element is transferred to a nodal point and cons uh, consistent element matrix is formed. Seventh, uh, formation of the overall loading matrix. Like the overall stiffness matrix, uh, at the very beginning, it was for an element. Then now for the global structure or the whole structure. When I say local and global, uh, global is the whole domain and local is for the individual. Element. So uh, assemble to the form of our whole loading matrix. This matrix has one column per loading case and it is uh, either Column, the column vector or rectangular matrix depending on the matrix of loading phase. Eighth step is incorporation of boundary conditions. So boundary conditions will be incorporated and some solutions will be uh, eliminated from the whole uh, matrix. So uh, boundary conditions, for example, that u of x is equal to zero is equal to zero or u of uh, one is equals to zero, those things will be incorporated. Uh, so that is incorporating the boundary condition. The ninth step is uh, solution of simultaneous equations. So we might have some n number of simultaneous equations depending on the uh, degree of freedoms assigned. So based on the n number of unknowns, so from that, the displacement will be obtained from the inverse of stiffness matrix with force matrix. So uh, by doing that, we can uh, calculate uh, large matrix. Maybe it depends on the amount of unknowns. Finally, uh, calculations of stress uh, or stress uh, resultants. 
So nodal displacements are related for uh, the calculation of stress or stressor resultants. This stressor resultants means maybe their force or moments or their force or stress. They may be done for all elements of continuum or it may be limited to some uh, predetermined elements. The result may, be, may also be obtained by graphical means. So we can display our result with the help of some graphical plots. And it may deserve to plot the contour of the deformed shape of the continent. So that contour plot of uh, a deformed or undeformed shape of material will be. Uh, that is the part of actually simulation, finite lung simulation. So uh, we already discussed these applications because many in many areas currently people use finite element model to uh, simplify uh, their problem domain and to find proper uh, method of approximation for their work that may be in automotive engineering, maybe in aerospace engineering. Uh, maybe in the fluid flow analysis, maybe in the heat uh, uh, flux analysis. So in most area, uh, people use uh, uh, finite element analysis method. So mostly uh, I can see this one by one, uh, the applications areas. In automotive uh, industry, static analysis, modal analysis, like vibration analysis, uh, transient dynamic analysis, heat transfer analysis, uh, mechanisms, uh, fracture mechanics, metal forming, crash hoarseness analysis. So in automotive, in this area, uh, FEM is uh, very helpful. In civil engineering construction, like soil mechanics, rock mechanics, hydraulics, fracture mechanics, hydroelastic elastic city. So in this area, uh, uh, it is very uh, important. And in aerospace industry, for static analysis, for modal analysis, for aerodynamics, transient dynamic, heat transfer, fracture mechanics, creep and plastic city analysis, composite material analysis, aeroelastic city analysis, metal forming and uh, crash hoarseness analysis. Uh, it is very uh, useful. Type of, uh, types of FEM analysis. When we say static analysis, we consider like deflection, stress, strain, force, energy. These things are uh, under Static analysis. Uh, dynamic analysis refers the frequency analysis, that finding the uh, natural frequencies, like uh, uh, the lowest natural frequencies, finding the deflection or the mood shapes in the case of uh, dynamic buckling of uh, uh, structural column, uh, stress analysis, strain analysis force and energies. In heat uh, transfer analysis, temperature, heat flux, thermal gradient, heat flow uh, of, from convection phases, this will be uh, analyzed. In the case of load, uh, the pressures, the gas temperatures, convection coefficients, the velocity gradients are uh, analyzed in the case of Fluid and other uh, others, including electromagnetic fields and soil mechanics, acoustics, and other fields. So let's come to uh, water elements, water nodes. So when we are discretizing the given continuum or the given domain, uh, the point where two elements are connected is called the node. And the elements are represented with uh, some proper type of uh, elements. Uh, we have many type of elements actually. Uh, in 1D, 
and 2D and 3D, we can represent the elements in different ways. So accuracy of our finite element approximation is improved by using more elements. So that means our discretization size should be smaller in order to get an accurate result. So one of the element is the uh, uh, bilinear element. Another is quadratic element. Means here we can see within one line we can find another node in between. If we see this line, uh, we have another extra node here, so it is quadratic. And uh, here there is no intermediate node. It is simply connecting two nodes, so that it is bilinear, uh, uh, linear element actually, but bilinear I can say. So let's see them one uh, by one. This is a um, uh, linear element for uh, bar elements, actually. We most of the time use this for bar element, uh, triangular, uh, quadrilateral, and others also. Uh, we can see this again here. Look. So this is um, 1D element. So 1D element, linear 1D element, quadratic 1D element, higher order 1D element. Or, uh, so based on the number of nodes in a given element, we can call linear, quadratic, and higher order. This is 2D element. That is triangular element. 2D triangular element. Um, 2D this is also a quadratic triangular element and higher order triangular element. So uh, here there is an intermediate node. Okay, here there is an intermediate node, but here there is no intermediate node. It is simply joining point to point. And here more than one intermediate point so that it is higher order. Again, this is a quadratic 2D, 2D quadrilateral elements. These are quadrilateral elements. Uh, linear quadrilateral, that is, we call it as some bilinear. Uh, this is a quadrilateral element with uh, some additional loads. Uh, for example, this is additional load, this is additional load. This is also additional load. This is additional load. This is also another. So this is quadratic uh, 2D uh, quadrilateral. And this is a higher order, uh, 2D higher order. And this is these are 3D uh, elements like uh, tetrahedron here, okay? Uh, like this, uh, triangular prism here, again here. You can see hexahedron uh, or uh, brick representation and the arrow of the element. So these are uh, 3D elements. Okay, so, so how we can discretize the given domain? Look, this is one uh, continuum system. This is one continuum system. Then uh, we discretize the continuum system into three parts. Element one, element two, element three. These uh, bold letters represent element numbers. And at the corner of uh, the continuum, at every discretized position point, you can see this thing. They are called nodes. Okay, these are nodes. So nodes are numbered from uh, uh, from left to right, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is this has reason uh, uh, we are numbering uh, nodes uh, like this. So in order to make uh, the our matrix size uh, smaller, that what we call the bandwidth consideration. So for that element. It, uh, referring numbering with uh, proper direction is required. So these numbers are node numbers, and these numbers are element numbers. 
So solution at element one is described using values at nodes one, two, six, and five. Look, one, two, six, five. So element one can be uh, defined in terms of this element, these nodes. Element two is defined in terms of two, three, seven, six. Element three defined in terms of three, four, eight, and seven nodes. So each of the elements contain four nodes. And the total number of nodes here are eight. So there are some nodes which are common to both elements. Okay, for example, two and six are common for one and the two. Seven and three are common for two and three. So uh, these are uh, uh, nodes which shares uh, the behavior of one element with another. So when we are talking about discretization, so elements are defined uh, by the properties of dimensionality, nodal points, geometry, degree of freedom, nodal force, that means uh, for non-homogeneous uh, right hand side of the differential equation, like uh, this is one of differential equation actually. Uh, it is non-linear uh, differential equation, uh, second order differential equation with uh, non-linear behavior. So, uh, Actually, when I'm talking here, degree of freedom, uh, it, is, it refers to the number of unknowns in a given uh, finite element. So uh, that degree of freedom related with the number of unknown variables and the number of nodes. Uh, the techniques of discretization, uh, we have two techniques, that finite difference discretization and finite element discretization. Uh, what finite difference discretization? The solution is discretized. The stability problem appears in this. Loss of physical meaning. Uh, so these are uh, the characteristics of the finite difference discretization. Finite element discretization, the problem is discretized. Physical meaning is con uh, conserved on element. Interpretation and control is easier in the, in the case of finite element discretization. Idealization. The mathematical model, uh, which is a symbolic uh, device, built to simulate the, and predict aspect of the behavioral system. So that is. Uh, mathematical model means uh, abstraction of physical reality. Okay. And implicit versus explicit modeling. So implicit modeling consists of uh, using a, a existent piecewise of uh, ex exist existent piece of abstractions and fitting them uh, into the particular solution. Explicit modeling consists of building the model from the scratch. Okay, so these are the two different modelings, uh, explicit and implicit modeling. Linear uh, so solution. So how we can uh, uh, solve uh, the finite element uh, equations? That linear system solution algorithms are used like Gauss uh, eliminations like fast Fourier transformation, uh, relaxation techniques are uh, useful, and the area estimation and the convergence analysis. Interpretation, the physical interpretation and the mathematical interpretation techniques are uh, used. The physical interpretation uh, related with the continuous physical model is divided into finite piece called element and the laws of nature are applied on the uh, generic element. The results are then recombined to result <coughs> represent the continuum. Sorry. When we come to mathematical, mathematical interpretation, the differential equation represents the system is converted to variational form. What variational form we'll see in the next 
this is uh, the part of this course. So which is approximated by the linear combination of finite set of trial functions or solution functions. So uh, what are the trial functions uh, that is the uh, concern of this course? So this is a simple 1D bar element, uh, bar uh, case. So this bar, actually we tried to see last time. So if we take the whole domain from uh, fixed end to the end where force applied, we can simply represent it with N1 and the N2, uh, U1 and the U2. Okay, we have that node one and the node two. So finite element analysis uh, solves for nodal values. All other can be calculated or interpolated from nodal uh, solutions. So uh, these node points are very important. Okay. So displacement with the element, we can approximate, for example, for this a linear AX, A plus BX, a linear equation. And then that the linear equation will be interpolated. Okay, so applying the boundaries, for example, if we see this, uh, here it is fixed, at x is equals to zero, u is equals to zero, at, uh, here we have force, at x is equals to uh, L, uh, F is equals to P. Okay, these are the boundaries. The force uh, and the displacement boundaries are two known uh, uh, boundaries in this case. This is free end which is subjected with axial load P and this is fixed. That means there is no dis, uh, deflection expected or displacement expected at this point. So this is the interpolation function uh, U2 minus U1 over U1 plus, U1 is this one, uh, sorry. U1 is this one, U2 is this one. So U2 minus U1, that means change in uh, U over L times X, uh, which is uh, after applying uh, some uh, interpolation, we can get L minus X over uh, L. Uh, U1 plus X over L equal. So this is the shape function or interpolation functions. L minus X over L and X over L are the interpolation functions at uh, U1 and at, uh, at 1 and the 2 nodes. Then the strain of the element is given in this. So this is given in the partial differential form, DU over DX. Once U is defined, once the, once the displacement is defined properly, then we can easily find the strain, which is strain is uh, um, calculated uh, with respect to uh, u, so that d over dx, which gives us uh, one over l u1 minus of plus one over all u2. So this is the strain for this particular element. And also, uh, I think we have discussed this thing in last uh, lecture, so I don't want to uh, devote more time for this simple uh, uh, linear equation and uh, linear. So, uh, just to summarize, uh, stress uh, from which law we have that stress with strain and the youngest modulus of material. So, sigma x is equals to uh, youngest modulus of material times uh, strain x, which already we defined in uh, this equation. Strain x is this one. So stress can be uh, found from the previous equation. And also, simply from uh, uh, this uh, force is equals to, stress is equal to force over area that, uh, mm, uh, we call it as from simply Kilgram equation, or we 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 can call it as Hooke's um, law, or like on that 
we can get these equations and substituting to the strain, we can get uh, this answer. And also then we can go for finding force. Okay. And then finding the global unknown, uh, the local uh, stiffness matrix. That means stiffness matrix, elemental stiffness matrix. Okay. So displacement function uh, is the one which is very important in most of our uh, approximate solutions. So uh, we use Pascal triangle for uh, a different displacement function. For example, for uh, 1D 11th, uh, we can use U of X, which is a displacement function, which is equal to A1 plus A2, X plus A3, X squared plus, then continue, based on our uh, interest. For example, if we take uh, two elements, uh, then this quadratic uh, is sufficient to describe. Okay, at the first we use linear level. For example, here we use linear A plus BX only. That is linear equation. Okay, uh, here, here we selected quadratic. So uh, A1 plus A2X plus A3X squared. So this A1, A2, and A3 are coefficients to be determined, okay? So this U can be represented in matrix form, okay? So one, the coefficient of A1 is one, the coefficient of an, uh, X is, uh, A2 is here, X, X squared. So one, X, X squared, A1, A2, A3, this is the coefficient to be determined, the non uh, question. Then once uh, uh, this is known, we can calculate the U matrix. That U1, U2, U3, U1 means the displacement at point uh, node one. Okay, so U2 is uh, one X2, X2 squared, uh, U3, 1, X3, X3 square. Uh, one means that fixed point, uh, or, uh, yeah, at X1, uh, X1 is zero, X2 and X3 are the distance to the nodes, and the coefficients found by solving the equation. So this is, uh, uh, three equations will be obtained from this matrix. Um, we can simply take this example. Uh, an axial bar, uh, 1D bar, which is subjected to is Q at this point and the P at this point, a material property 2 times E and the cross section area A, here also area A, that material property here is only E, that youngest modulus only. This is twice of youngest modulus, so this more rigid material. So how we can discretize? We discretize it using uh, considering the point where load applied. Okay, so node one, node two, node three. So node one, node two, node three considered from here. And we have two elements. So three node ways, two elements. So, <coughs> U1, U2, and the U3 are the uh, expected uh, displacement or the uh, uh, nodal uh, displacements. F1, F2, and F3 are forces as the uh, three nodes. So then let me let us discretize it, the element into uh, element one, that is element A, and element B. So element A is uh, node one, it consists of node one and the node two. Element uh, uh, B is consisting node two and the three, that global nodes. So uh, we can assign values of those nodes here. Then uh, 
select the displacement function for the uh, this case. So let's consider the uh, quadratic function. So we can define the stress and the strain. Uh, similarly, uh, what we have uh, discussed in the previous case, uh, we can drive the element stiffness matrix and element equations. Okay. So this is element stiffness matrix for element A and element B. Uh, we drive the uh, matrix and then assembling the matrix. Okay. This is the assemble or global uh, constructing global equation and applying boundary condition at x is equal to zero. Uh, U1 is equal to zero, so that we impose this uh, uh, boundary conditions and uh, unknown, unknown uh, variables are F3 is known, that is P, F2 is known, that is Q, okay? So we can insert these values and finally calculate for uh, unknowns. So this is similar uh, problem as we have uh, done in uh, last lecture. You can refer it back and interpret the result finally. Final uh, result interpretation will come. Okay, now uh, I think uh, this is sufficient for today. Yeah. So uh, thank you very much.